In this video, I'm gonna be showing you eight smartphone gimbal transitions that anyone can do. I'm gonna walk you through each one step by step so that you can apply these same transitions to your films and videos, making them look much more professional and creative. It's coming up. Hey everyone, Steve here from Learn Online Video, and today I'm in Plymouth in the southwest of England, where I'm going to be showing you eight smartphone gimbal transitions that will instantly take your mobile filmmaking to the next level. These transitions are a great creative way to take your audience from one shot to another. Helping me on this shoot today is Han Fisher, a model, photographer, snowboarder, and all-round talent. I'm going to be shooting everything on the iPhone 11 and combining that with the all-new Zhuin Smooth Q3, a great gimbal for these types of shots. I'm gonna show you how to shoot each transition and at the end of this video, I will edit all of these transitions into a sequence using music, color grading, and sound effects to see what results we get. As always, all gear used in this video as well as my camera settings will be linked in the description below but with all that out of the way let's jump straight into this tutorial with transition number one the match cut the easiest transition of the mall nice and simple this one I'm going to start by framing my subject in the center of frame lock focus and exposure now walk backwards whilst your subject walks forwards keeping them in the center of frame at all time then repeat this process at as many different locations as you like replicating the same framing each time then edit all of these clips together to create an effect where your subject's environment changes as they walk. Also, be sure to experiment with different focal lengths. Shooting with a wide angle lens works great with this effect. And try experimenting with your framing and camera movement. This effect also works great from the side walking parallel to your subject. Okay, next up, the wipe. Again, we're going to walk parallel with our subject for this one, only this time we're going to use something in the foreground to wipe through the shot. I'm going to use this concrete pillar. Okay, we're tracking forwards and the concrete pillar wipes past the shot. Let's see that again and hold it there. This is what we're looking for. We want to try and fill the entire frame with something in the foreground. This is how we're going to end shot number one. This time I'm going to start my shot from behind the concrete pillar and then reveal my subject as she walks towards me, keeping the same pacing and movement as shot number one. Now let's edit these two shots together. Okay, let's see another example. This time, I'm going to use this tree for shot number one. I'm then going to change locations and use this tree for shot number two. Let's take a look. Also, you don't necessarily need to change locations for this transition. In this shot, I start on a wide and then wipe to a mid shot. Much more subtle, but still a great transition to add to your films and videos. Okay, the whip transition. Quick heads up here because you're going to look like a complete maniac filming this one, but you can shoot just about anything with this transition. The most important part is that you whip out at the end of your shot, like this. Quickly whipping out at the end of your shot will create motion blur and this motion blur is what we need in order to pull this effect off. Okay, shot number two. We want to whip in to our second shot like this. This time our shot starts with motion blur and ends on our subject. Now let's edit these clips together using nothing but a simple cut. Also, you can whip in to just about anything. Take this shot here, for example. I whip in with both myself and my subject walking. Okay, moving on, the wall orbit. A great transition, this one, although slightly harder to pull off. We're going to lean our subject against a wall, ideally one that looks interesting, and then orbit around them, keeping an equal distance from them at all times. Also, be sure to enable the grids on your camera. This will definitely help with framing. I try to keep my subject in the center with their eyes on the top horizontal line. Again, repeat this process at as many different locations as you like, keeping the same framing each time. Now for me, these shots always seem a little bit too slow, so I like to speed them up in the edit and add some sound effects. This creates a much more seamless transition. The black frame. Now you can do this transition on just about any subject or focal point. Just make sure that each shot either starts or ends with a black frame. For this example, I'm going to push forward and use hands lens as a way of creating a black frame. The camera pushes forward, we get nice and close and we end on a black frame. 
Okay, shot number two. At a new location, I'm now going to repeat this process in reverse. I'm going to start nice and close to Han's lens on a black frame and pull back. Now let's edit these two shots together. Okay, next up, the through the floor transition. One of my favorites, this one, and it's nice and easy to pull off. Now for this transition, I'm going to put my gimbal in low rider mode because I want to get my lens as close to the ground as possible. I'm going to cue my subject to walk through the frame whilst moving my camera down towards the ground. The aim of the game here is to get your camera below ground level. This is what we're trying to achieve. We want the end of our shot to look as though it's gone all the way through the floor. Okay, shot number two, we're now going to start with our camera high up against a ceiling or roof. The cavity in this car park will work great. Again, I'm going to cue my subject to walk forward and pull my camera down towards the ground. Again, be sure to experiment and get creative with this transition. I got lucky at this location and found a heap of dirt, so I was really able to sell the idea that the camera was traveling through the ground. I then combined this with a shot where my subject walks towards the camera to create a black frame. So as you can see, we're now starting to link one transition to another, the rotate. Now, one of my favorite features of this gimbal is vortex mode. In this mode, when I push my joystick up or down, it gives me complete control of my roll axis, allowing me to get much more creative with these transitions. Shot number one, I'm going to walk towards my subject whilst rotating my camera and end on a black frame. Okay, shot number two. This time I'm going to start on a black frame, pull back whilst rotating my camera and have my subject walk forwards. This is the result. The mask transition. This is the most advanced transition on the list as it requires a little extra planning and editing. For this, we're going to use a piece of green felt cut into a small circle and using double-sided tape, stick it to the front of Han's lens. I'm going to push forward towards Han and then cue her to lift her camera as I get closer. The aim here is to end your shot on a completely green frame, like this. Okay, shot number two. For this shot, I want to shoot a moving time-lapse or hyperlapse. So I'm going to select time-lapse on my camera and push forward for about 60 seconds. This is the result. Now, in the edit, I'm going to remove the green felt from shot number one. I'm using Final Cut Pro, but any editing software that has the chroma key tool will allow you to do this. And I'm then going to lay the hyperlapse shot underneath. This is the result. So those were all eight transitions as individual shots. Now let's edit these together into a sequence using music, color grading, and sound effects. So as you can see, when you edit these transitions into a sequence, the footage really comes alive. If you found this video useful, do let me know by giving it the old thumbs up. A big thanks to Han Fisher for helping out on this shoot. I will link her Instagram below. Also a huge thank you to Zhuin for sending out the new Smooth Q3. I will also link that below. And if you'd like to see more content like this, learn more about video production, you can do that by watching one of my other videos just over there. But that's it from me. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.